Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. Today we're going to take these little hoppy friends on a new adventure. We're going to take them through to the nether where we're going to set up a frog light farm. And before the episode started, I've been gathering a few resources that are going to really help us get this frog light farm set up nice and easily. We are going to go over to a treasure room bastion, one of the big bastions that you can find out there in the nether. And well, first of all, we're going to make sure that that's cleared of all other dangers like piglin brutes and stuff like that. We're going to have to make sure that we have some gold armor on, which I haven't left in here, but I'm pretty sure is in my backup gear shulker box here in my ender chest. Yeah, we'll bring the unbreaking helmet with us. And I believe I do know where a treasure room bastion is that we've raided in the past. So the first thing we're going to do is head out there and make sure everything is secure. So this right here is, I believe, the wall of our treasure bastion. Let's dig on in here, probably, <laughs> probably in the wrong place at first. But yeah, Yes, this is definitely the one. The piglins are patrolling peacefully. I don't know if there are any more piglin brutes left in here. We're going to find out soon enough if there are. But what we really want is down here. So you have two options effectively when making a frog light farm because the main thing we need to do is have frogs eat magma cubes. And one of those options is of course to set up in a basalt delta where magma cubes are going to spawn naturally. The other is right here in this piglin bastion where a magma cube spawner hangs from underneath the central bridge. That is always a magma cube spawner and it is always in the same place. And it operates much the same as other spawners do in the overworld. If you get within a 16 block radius of it, it's going to start spinning up and magma cubes will appear as long as there are not too many magma cubes already in the radius of the spawner. So in order to turn this into a frog light farm, we need to make sure that we can break down the magma cubes to their smallest type so that we end up with the small magma cubes, which the frogs will just naturally eat. And since magma cubes don't attack frogs, it's going to be pretty safe to just leave the frogs down here and have them attack the magma cubes whenever they pop up. But really, the first thing we need to do is make sure that magma cubes aren't going to spawn while we're working on the farm, because there are already a bunch spawning around here and they can get very large, they can hit very hard, and even the small ones will still deal damage to you, unlike slimes. Naturally, since this is a very well-lit environment with all the lava around, lighting the spawner up it really isn't going to do anything, and magma cubes, I believe, can spawn in basically any light level. So the solution in this case is going to be to block off everywhere that a magma cube could potentially spawn around this spawner, and this is going to be a pretty straightforward thing to do. We just need to go four blocks out from the spawner in each direction. We're going to connect each of these four at the corners, so we end up with a 9x9 nine nine square centered on the spawner. We're going to fill all of that in, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing, one block above and one block below. And you can do this with any material that you want to, but I've decided to do it with dirt here for a couple of reasons. The first one really being that dirt is nice and easy to get in such large quantities, and the second being that it's a material that you use a shovel to get rid of, not a pickaxe. So there's no risk of you breaking the spawner accidentally when we come back and take all of this away later, allowing the magma cubes to spawn again. Uh, that'll do. There's still a little bit of room over here. I can probably fill that in with extra blocks if I wanted to, but the fact is magma cubes have to have a certain radius of air blocks around them in order to spawn, so as long as we have most of this area covered, we're pretty much good. You could end up doing kind of like three block tall pillars every couple of blocks, and that would probably be okay, but it's kind of a pain to arrange that in a grid when there are magma cubes spawning all around you, so I just block the entire thing in for good measure. I've set up inside of this central treasure room box for now, because it's a place that I can open my shulker boxes and chests and stuff without the piglins getting mad at me. But when we pop back out here, the first thing we are going to do is mark out out this 9x9 area and outline it with some other kind of solid block. I'm probably going to be using deep slate bricks for this because they look a little bit different to the blackstone, so I think it'll be nice to contrast that with the blackstone in the surrounding area. And once we've got that area outlined, the first thing I'm going to do is throw down some gravel to see quite how deep this lava lake is. And in some cases it may not be all that deep, and in others it may be a little deeper, but the majority of this looks like it's only two blocks deep, at which point we have a couple of different options. Either continue to drop gravel in from above, and this should be a fairly straightforward task seeing as it's a fairly shallow lake, alternatively what we can do is throw some scaffolding down there, and scaffolding will actually allow us to clear out the top of a lava lake like this layer by layer pretty easily. The best part about this is you can get further than six blocks away from the base block of the scaffolding, this block here that's kind of holding the rest of the scaffolding up, and it'll just fall downwards, but it'll fall downwards the same way gravel does, meaning it will erase the lava underneath it. And once we take all of this away, some of it's going to get burnt in the lava, but it's okay, we can farm scaffolding pretty easily. We'll find that it's actually pretty straightforward to remove that second layer of lava, and we're left with 
a pretty empty tank. It'll also allow you to clear the lava out from underneath some of these blocks that still have lava below them, meaning you don't need to worry about lava flowing back into the space once you're done. And what we end up with after that is this indented tray of blackstone here, but this is where the other problems begin because these sections here are not as shallow as the previous ones. They actually go down into the lava lakes that generate below a certain height in the nether and it seems like these are each about seven or eight blocks deep minimum. So we do need to be a little bit careful and once we start breaking out this layer of blackstone, you'll find that that is the case basically all the way around this. Unless you get lucky and your treasure bastion generates above a solid chunk of terrain, you're probably always gonna find lava underneath this area as well. So this is where having some fire resistance potions or a whole lot of gravel is gonna come in handy. I didn't bring too much gravel with me, but luckily the nether landscape has a few patches of it lying around, as long as you are careful that it doesn't fall out from underneath you when you break it. And now we've got the outside of this square boxed off in gravel, we can probably do the same thing either with gravel or scaffolding and fill in the remaining pockets of lava here. And once you're done with that, you should end up with a pretty tall pit into which the magma cubes can fall and meet their end at the hands of a frog. Well, if frogs have hands and then we're just gonna get eaten by frogs anyway now we're gonna return to our shulker boxes grab a bunch of the stuff that we need to make a collection mechanism we'll put a line of redstone blocks across the center here to power all of the minecart rails our last three blocks of which here are going to be hoppers that will output into a collection chest that we'll put there or perhaps even a dropper pipe that's gonna feed back up to the top here just so we don't have to worry about diving down into lava to collect all of the drops this track should now allow a hopper minecart to go back and forth on it collecting all of the frog lights and as they are produced. We can reconfigure the rails at the start here to have a single piece of regular rail in between the powered rails and that way we can turn on and off this powered rail here to shut down the collection mechanism when we're not using it. The floor above this is going to be some sort of solid block and it will need to be a full solid block for reasons I'll explain a bit later. Once we have that floor in place we're going to head back down here with all of the buckets of powdered snow that we brought with us. We're going to set up scaffolding on alternating blocks one block out from the edge here and we're going to put down a block of powdered snow on top of each one. We can remove the scaffolding afterwards and if we walk into this you'll notice that frost vignette starts to build up and will start to take freezing damage. And so with exactly 16 buckets of powder snow we have this 4x4 grid of powder snow blocks one block out from the edge and one block up from the floor now just as a quick experiment we're going to remove some of the dirt blocks from underneath here so that some magma cubes should spawn and fall down into this pit what happens now is that the magma cubes will fall down into this pit and if they're the smallest type of magma cube nothing's really going to happen to them but if they are the largest or medium sized magma cubes their hitboxes will overlap with the powdered snow block and that's going to to cause them eventually to take unavoidable freezing damage, at which point they will end up splitting up into the smaller type of magma cubes. With the large ones, it's pretty much unavoidable. You'll see them start to shiver and pretty soon they'll take a couple of points of damage and split up into the medium sized magma cubes. See that one right there is doing it. This other one will follow suit in just a second. And even though they're jumping around, eventually they will start to split up. Now it only happens to the medium sized ones because they are ever so slightly taller than a block. And if you ended up making the floor here out of something more convenient like mud or soul sand which could just drag the items through onto a grid of hoppers below. Unfortunately that gives the medium sized magma cubes enough leeway to avoid hitting the powder snow and taking any damage but as you can see already we have so many of the smaller magma cubes that are just going to get eaten up by any of the frogs that we leave inside of here and then our hopper minecart once that rail is powered is going to go around this whole circuit picking up all of the frog lights and potentially magma cream through the floor as it goes. Now I'm going to fill in a few more of these dirt blocks again because unfortunately there is still a little bit of work to be done here and we want to make sure that we can avoid too many magma cubes spawning while we're working around here while we're setting up the collection area for the frog lights or whatever dropper pipe we want to use to get them all back up here to this area which I'm probably going to turn into a control room or an AFK box of sorts for the farm, we are also going to have to make sure that we can get the frogs here. And that's going to be the hardest part of all of this, really. We need to set up a tunnel through the nether that we're going to be able to drag the frogs from, from various breeding sites around the world. Because we want each of the different types of frog lights to be generated by this farm, and that means getting frogs from a cold biome, a temperate biome, 
and a hot biome. But it's only been about a minute and just look at the amount of small magma cubes that are down here. These are all <laughs> going to produce frog lights for us and that means we'll need to bring quite a few frogs over here if we're going to match these kinds of rates. For now at least we can pack up our supplies here, we can bring some of this stuff home with us and we need to go and start breeding some frogs. So after a bunch of travel time, I have got the nether tunnel dug out to the bastion and I brought these seven green frogs back from the mountain biome to spawn. And then, as I was most of the way through digging the nether tunnel, I realized I'm kind of approaching this the wrong way. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But we're going to make good on our original plan to take these seven frogs through the nether. And then we'll probably get the other ones there a different way. But the first challenge really is going to be getting them to come through the nether portal with me in the first place. I think I'm going to have to break out some of the blocks on the other side of the portal and drag them on through. And that only half worked. So we're going to tie up a handful of them here while we rescue the other few. <laughs> but now we have all seven of them on leads. We can drag them down this netherrack staircase and down a two wide tunnel that I've built, which only really starts over here on the other side of this crimson forest, so I'm going to have to watch out for hoglins in the meantime. And while most of this is going to be pretty plain sailing down these tunnels, we do need to make sure that the frogs don't walk off the edge of any of these bridges. And also, we only have six of them right now, so I think I may have left one of them back there. The trick seems to be to keep moving, though, because even though they're pushing each other around a little bit up there, they never seem to quite get to the point where they've walked off the edge. The handrails are definitely a must, though. I can't see the frogs staying on this bridge if we didn't have the guy rails on the sides. But that in front of us is the broken out wall of the bastion and that should lead straight down into the pit where these frogs are going to be gathering frog lights. So let's hop on down. Looks like we have all of them here and thankfully they survived that fall. Frogs don't take as much fall damage as other mobs because of how much they jump so it looks like we have now installed our froggy friends right where they need to be. And even though the powder snow blocks are here, the frogs will hang around at ground level for the most part. So while they will occasionally jump into the powder snow, they're only going to have that freezing effect for a very short moment. And that's not going to be enough to actually cause damage to any of them. So now I'm going to hop out of here myself and try not to hit too much on the way up. I don't want to leave any scaffolding or anything like that just in case any of the magma cubes are able to jump on it instead of falling on in. And while I think I am going to keep this tunnel here because it's frankly a pretty convenient connection to the nether hub, I'm not going to bring the rest of the frogs over that way because there is a glaringly obvious way we could have done this smarter. But it looks like our frogs are already going to work. <laughs> There's a couple of verdant frog lights just hanging out on the ground down there as they eat some of the smaller magma cubes that are filtering in from the sides here. And that bigger magma cube is already down there. It's paying absolutely no attention to the frogs whatsoever. Instead, it's going to take a little bit of freezing damage in just a second. It's going to split up into medium-sized magma cubes. They'll all split up and the frogs will be able to eat them. As is glaringly obvious from the coordinates HUD that I have on the screen right now, this bastion is about a thousand blocks out in the nether, which means it's close to 8,000 blocks out in the overworld. It was going to be quite a trek to get everything over to an overworld nether portal, but getting stuff through the nether is always a little fraught with danger. So the obvious solution to both of these problems 
problems was to do a bit of thinking with portals and set up a nether portal out here, which we could hopefully connect to a decent location on the surface in the overworld, or alternatively inside of an amethyst geode. Wow, that is one of the cooler locations that I've spawned in a nether portal. And checking the biome data on our F3 display, it does seem that we're underneath an ocean, so digging up to the surface right here might not be the easiest idea. However, if there is a flooded cave around here, which the bubbly noise seemed to indicate there was, there might be a way of swimming up to the surface. And if not, there's always the opportunity of staircasing out through this geode. Once we're on the surface, we can assess our surroundings, which looks like the middle of nowhere to me. But the middle of nowhere is a perfectly valid place for us to breed some frogs. So we're going to plug up all the holes in the ship so the tadpoles can't swim out. And we're going to release six of our tadpoles in here to grow up into whatever type of frog we get from a deep, lukewarm ocean. Which fortunately is either going to be the temperate kind or the hot biome kind. So we're going to get either white or orange frogs from this. And once they've grown into fully fledged frogs, we can drag them back down into that geode portal and take them straight to the bastion from this location, seven or eight thousand blocks out in the overworld. Now obviously the environment you come out into the overworld is going to vary dramatically and we got really lucky that there wasn't a cold biome here like a snow plains or something like that because we just brought over all of the cold biome frogs that we wanted for the frog light farm. However it seems a little bit more straightforward taking them from an overworld location directly to the bastion than spending a bunch of time faffing around building all the tunnels in the nether. Maybe do it like I did and do it once just so you have a tunnel there from your nether hub but beyond that dragging the frogs around is some of the more precarious work that you have to do to get this farm in motion. Well, it turns out they're orange frogs, which is great. There is a jungle over there which should hopefully help us breed some of the white frogs as well, so we really don't have that far to go after all. Uh, I could do without being attacked by a trident, though. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some sleep here. Well, that's not going to stop the drown from attacking me, so trident number two, maybe? Oh, just some rotten flesh. Never mind. Doesn't look like I missed any of the babies growing up. There's another one. And it's very useful that the boat has so many fences on it because we needed something to tie them up to so they didn't just swim away. But now with all six of them grown up, let's try getting them down into that geode, which I'm pretty sure was back over this way, just to the right of the ocean monument. And I did mark it with a couple of shroom lights so we know where we're going. Just got to avoid running into either pufferfish or guardians in the process. <laughs> now let's see if we can get them down under those. Is this another geode? Oh my goodness. Oh no, maybe that's the same one. It's just kind of tall, I guess. So maybe we can dig down from the top and drop them into the nether portal from above. Yeah, we got one down here, but I think a lot of the leads just broke. <laughs> yep, yeah, they're all just kind of floating to the surface, I guess. Maybe it'll be a little easier if we widen this out some. Let's go retrieve this last one. The rest of them might just hop into the nether portal in the meantime. <laughs> well, they're certainly going to hop around it anyway, but we can drag them through one by one if we need to. And let's just hope that the ones who've already gone through haven't decided to hop into lava. Well, looks like a handful of them are still here, at least. The others are wandering on through, but... We need to drop on down here and make sure they don't take too much full damage. And in the meantime, we can collect up all of the verdant frog lights that have dropped down here because there are a bunch of them. And at least one of our frogs has already gone exploring. <laughs> yeah, I have no real sign of where the others are, so it looks like they might unfortunately have gone in the lava. But at least we know we can get rid of the top layer of lava in here and that will give us plenty of opportunity to bring more frogs back through the portal. And in the meantime, we can set this farm running AFK here for a little while and see how many frog lights we get hold of. We're getting some ochre frog lights now as well from our orange friends. We've already got nearly a stack of the verdant frog lights, and that's just from the first batch of magma cubes these ones were able to eat up. So I think with a few more additions, we can call this farm a roaring success. And if I dig on down here to the bottom of this patch of gravel, we'll find the area where that hopper output is. We can put a chest there. We can put a switch which to turn the minecart collection mechanism on and off, and I think this will all go swimmingly. Oh, amazing. I came back through, and two of our frogs were just sat here, like they'd come back through the portal after I'd gone in. Well, not to worry, we've at least got two more of these frogs that we can bring over. We'll take them off the leads and give them a quick nudge into the pit. The powder snow is even going to break their fall a little bit. And there they go, making frog lights. But with the ladder down to our collection area, a lever to turn the minecart collection on and off, and the magma cubes merrily freezing away inside the farm. I think that's probably where we're going to wrap up this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I need to get this thing edited and out to you folks, and we'll get the white frogs moved in in the near future. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.